Hey everyone, John Hendricks here, Boot Crew Media, coming at you with an episode of Move Them Chains. Well, let's talk a little bit about Saints here, guys. Let's talk a little bit about specifically kind of the decision to pursue a little bit or host Sony Michelle on a visit. And obviously he didn't sign with the team. So just kind of talk a little bit about what that might mean. And let's also dive in a little bit more to Jarvis Landry and just kind of say, is that going to be even a smart move to make or not? So with the Saints, obviously, you know, they're going to do their due diligence, right? And the thing is we're in May. So any moves that they make now aren't necessarily the ones that are going to happen and have that are going to be there for training camp when it starts here in August. So Really what I mean by that is that, you know, obviously you don't know how the Alvin Kamara situation is going to play out. You got Mark Ingram. He's got another year on his uh, on his belt, and he's obviously getting up there a little bit. Behind him, it's a little bit question marks, right? You got Tony Jones Jr. had a great camp. He obviously edged out Latavius Murray and made that decision to cut him a lot easier uh, last season. And then obviously you even look at uh, the depth past him. It's Dwayne Washington, more of a special teams guy. Josh Adams, more of a, you know, he was a reserve future guy. Don't know if he's going to bring much. And obviously, Abram Smith out of Baylor, that's going to be the one to really keep an eye on. And he's obviously a more physical runner. Very interesting uh, and intriguing, if you will. But look, again, this is all hinging on what happens with Alvin Kamara. So, again, I, I don't think it's a position where you have to say this is a team has to add somebody um, and they have to bring in a, a veteran guy, but I expect them to at some point. And, you know, look at last year, right? You had the backfield preset. Latavius Murray was backing up Al Kamara at that time. They brought in Devonta, Devonte Freeman, uh, you know, formerly the Falcons, everybody's favorite, favorite running back. Right. And he didn't end up surviving final cuts, but he was there for a good bit. And, it's just kind of how training camp plays out for some of these guys. I mean, you even bring in Chris Hogan later after the fact. And so you look at moves like that, and again, it's May, so nothing's set in stone, nothing's concrete. You know, guys like Jalen Dalton who got released, maybe he comes back. Um, but, you know, that's just how things run. And so the team that's here now is going to look a lot different as we move over the next several months. But, you know, very interesting that they were interested in Sony Michelle. Obviously that didn't pan out. Um, but, you know, look, Keep an eye on some guys that are still out there. Philip Lindsay, Le'Veon Bell. I mean, there are the ones out there if they look even at Tariq Cohen or something. I mean, there's just guys that could potentially fit down the road and you just don't know what happens. So that's what I'd say about the running back spot. Um, now let's move over to wide receiver. Let's talk about Jarvis Landry because obviously that's the big one, right? They get through the draft process. They go through everything. Now Jarvis Landry, the Browns are not going to pursue him. This is just going to be a thing. Now the Ravens have entered the picture, right? And so now the Saints, if you're looking at it, you got Michael Thomas, you got Chris Olave, maybe it's Jarvis Landry in the spot, right? And again, the thing is, what I would say on that one is, first of all, his asking price has got to come down significantly, right? This guy hasn't flirted with a thousand yards in, in a couple seasons, just hasn't really been the best. I, I don't know how he was thinking he would get $20 million a year uh, coming into this process. And really you got to remember Christian Kurtz deal with, the Dolphins kind of screwed everything up in the market, but you know, look, he's an intriguing player, definitely looking to rebound and bounce back. Um, you know, I guess the question is where's the sweet spot, you know, and if he's really about trying to revitalize or try to help this team, you know, I, I don't say it's a hometown discount or a friendly type of deal, but at the same time, you know, I don't think you can pay him top dollar, just even if they have the cap space, it's just not smart, you know, getting a rookie class, probably about four to $5 million against the cap. That's what you're looking at. But with Landry, you know, you look at the other mouths to feed, right? And you look at Deontay Hardy, Traquan Smith, Marquez Calloway. Now, suddenly, if you add somebody in, which I kind of liked, obviously. I, I was, you know, pounding to death saying they got to get two wide receivers in this draft. But, um, you know, it's going to help push the depth chart, obviously. But that's also going to leave a lot of these other guys who might be looking at a shot to try to make the roster like a Kirk Merritt or a Jalen McCleskey or, you know, some of these guys that are really kind of unknowns. Um they're going to be all the odd man looking out. And obviously you got to remember too, when you're building this whole thing out, you got to, to look at your practice squad too. And not everything works this way. Right. But training camp battles will be really fun. Should they pursue Jarvis Landry? I think they're doing their due diligence, maybe revitalize a, a few talks on it, but look, you know, the Ravens being interested, they, they need wide receivers too. Right. And so I think if you come down to a bidding war, you'll really see where Landry's heart and where his decision lies. Is it more about the money or is it more about the opportunity? Because with the Saints adding Tyron Matthew, I mean, it, it really inst instantly boosted them to a real contender uh, defensively. They were already good, but you know, now with Landry and the way things played out with the draft, 
again, you got to like New Orleans and their chances, right? And they're going to give Jameis Winston the shot. They're going to let him do his thing, let him cook. And, uh, you know, too many weapons aren't a bad thing. I mean, you look at last year, you look at the corner situation. Um, they had to trade for Bradley Roby because Patrick Robinson retired and Ken Crawley got hurt. And, you know, they didn't really know what they had with Paulson Idiovo. He was a rookie. So very interesting things. But, you know, I say all that to say, you look at all these moves and, and we're in May and you got rookie mini camp coming up soon. We'll have some exclusive stuff here on Boot Crew um, reporting from that. And so, look, you just have to see how it what happens because, you know, training camp late July, early August, a lot of stuff will heat up. If you make those moves now, maybe, maybe, maybe not. But again, any of the free agents that you add, there is no compensatory pick formula. So we'll see what the Saints do. But as always, stay tuned to Boot Crew dot media or Boot Crew Media, excuse me, and uh, keep tuned to our new show, which has gone through a couple of changes. But I think we've settled on <laughs> move them chains. Resonates with Saints fans, right? So stay tuned here. Again, I'm John Hendricks for Boot Crew Media. Have a good one.